Welcome to Uncomfortable, conversations about culture and Christianity. My name is Eric, and today I'm joined by Rachel. Hey, y'all. And Jess. Hello, world. Alex. Howdy, partners. I, you've used howdy too recently. Yes. I think you yep. weren't prepared today, and I'm going to call oh. you out. Oh, I think I, bet I know why. Or is it because of this giant cowboy boot that's sitting yep. next to you? I think that he's is a, why. I think oh, he's okay. a Western. I was trying feeling. to. I was trying to <laughs> vibe with my inner Rachel. Oh, you know, oh. hey y'all. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I was going to my howdy partner because I got this boot. So. Okay, there is a giant uh, metal looking cowboy boot next to you. Yes. And there are some pieces of paper in there. You have brought this, uh, if I understand it correctly, you printed off 12 random questions that you are fairly unfamiliar with. Yeah, I'm kind of question worried generator. right now. We okay. have a question I'm generator scared. we use sometimes <laughs> here on the social media team. Yeah. And they're like, you can, you know, make it ask safe questions. Yeah. Appropriate. Appropriate. So like icebreakers kind of. Yeah, icebreakers. Okay. So, so you brought a little icebreaker. Some are, might, might be serious. Some might be like nostalgic. So on today's episode, we're going to be talking <laughs> about QAnon and conspiracy theories and how that correlates with the church and, and Christianity at whole. Uh, so this is a nice precursor to maybe have a little fun before we dive into something maybe. that is... Or maybe get real Or maybe it's going to be yeah, really yeah. not fun. I don't know. Who knows what's coming out of that boot? Uh, I don't. Do I honestly know. don't. Oh, so I guess you'll draw, and then who, draw. Are, you, who are you drawing for first? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, this is the Western episode. <laughs> um, yeah, how, let's how, go. How do we find out? What's the What's the best way to? Huh? Can you play um, rock paper scissors four ways? Is that possible? I, I don't, don't think, think so. you can. Why not? It depends on what part of the country you're from. Depends Some people call who, it what, let's, let's go let's oldest go to youngest. Oh. Or we can just go opposite <laughs> way that we do the introductions. I can go first. Okay. okay. You just um, go. And that's good. Just answer first thing that comes to your mind. So I'm going to dig into here. Stick your hand in there. You all hear me digging. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. (laughs) What's the most spontaneous thing you've ever done? (laughs) Okay. Besides answering this question. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. Yeah, these questions. I'm concerned. Um, Go ahead. Uh, Oh, man. I got to. Okay. So one time, one time, a friend and I, uh, this was back in, I don't know what year, the PGA... Uh, championship tiger woods was winning Mm -hmm. this and he had never lost going into the final day so i have a friend him and i they were playing in chaska minnesota and so me and my buddy we decided at like eight o'clock saturday night because the final round is on on um sunday my friend zach uh one of jess's mutual friends with with myself we decided at eight o'clock we're going to get on craigslist buy tickets to go watch tiger win tiger win tiger woods win (laughs) uh a pga championship win a major wow he had never lost and so we we did it we got him we literally drove up overnight like on a whim drove to some random person's house bought the tickets uh because you had to use craigslist and you couldn't like use the marketplace and know Mm. what people who people are we got them. We went, followed Tiger Woods around all day. I actually, <laughs> there's a guy named Patrick Harrington, which was a really good golfer at the time. He's kind of sloping downward, but I was going to the porta potty. And oh. he, he walked out of the porta potty. So we had like that interaction. I felt really cool. <laughs> and then Did it you was go the, the first. same porta potty? No, no, no. Uh, well, yes, I went in that like porta potty. Like you were yes. passing? I went in that porta potty as wow. he was walking out. But I wasn't expecting a tour golfer to be using the porta potty. Oh, Alex. <laughs> Uh, anyway, first time ever in history, Tiger Woods ended up losing to a guy named Y.E. <gasps> Yang. Oh. So we didn't get a witness history. And then, like, I think that week was, like, everything exploded in Tiger's life. And then we all knew why oh, he didn't win. He wasn't focused wow. because oh. he had some side hustles going on. And so oh, that was, like, super spontaneous. Spent more money than we should have. But it was, like, mm. it's one of those memories I'll, I'll never forget. So oh. wow. is this? So are we all answering this question? No, 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 I no. Have, oh, okay. each have, you each have oh, your own question. Okay. Oh, that Rachel was, was all really excited like, to was, answer. Yeah. Oh, well. I feel like you set yourself up really well, Alex. I know. I feel like, <laughs> oh, I feel like, I feel like you read all those questions and you're yeah. like, I know what I would answer. Because <laughs> yeah. I could not Maybe. have told that great also, of an the elaborate font story. It's very large. <laughs> it is large. I just literally <laughs> copied and pasted it. Yeah, I think this it was is like size 19. 20. 19. <laughs> all right. Are you gonna are you gonna draw Jess? Oh no, question. I'm scared. He's digging into a boot, a silver boot. <laughs> okay, okay. Here's oh no, Jess's I'm question. It looks long. <laughs> what weird thing do you do when nobody else is around? 
Is that seriously the <laughs> answer? <a> question. <laughs> no, it's a oh, question. That's the question. <laughs> You're giving that's us the, the answer. That's the question? <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> what do you do? What <laughs> weird thing do I do? There has I to be feel something. Like like if I'm totally uh, like, we want you to be totally honest. Yes. <laughs> okay. If you're thinking like burping and farting, I do that in front of like everyone at my house. Okay. Not ashamed. Yeah. That's right. That's a human. So that's not it. So that's a, a weird no, thing you do when it. nobody else is around. We can call your husband. Guys, I know he so wouldn't he, know if he's not around. No, I'm. I think he could be. Yeah, around. like if he, he, oh Ben yeah. could be around. I mean, you're basically. Yeah. Well, if he's. <laughs> <laughs> no, what not that. What is it? I don't know. It's weird thing. Not- I don't know. Like I, and I almost feel like I should be answering like I'm doing something bad. No, I don't, I don't know. think that's bad. <laughs> it does have to be bad. Do you chew your fingernails? Do you like? No. Do you randomly separate your yolks from your egg whites? Do you smell your socks after you take them off? <laughs> <Yeah>. What? <laughs> what? I'm trying to I, think. I'm trying to think of what it would be. Yeah. What weird something. things if you do can I do? Pass it or. No, I can't pass it. Mm-mm. No passing. No passing. No, that's the rules that we just made up. On this <laughs> oh my totally God. made up game okay, that we're playing. This is, I don't know if it's weird. Maybe it's a little weird. I do have an app that okay, I use. Okay, Hold I on. like where this is going. Hold mm-hmm. on. <laughs> this is kind of embarrassing, and I haven't told anybody this. I don't even think Ben knows I do this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this okay. is what we're looking for. There's <laughs> a, an app that I go on. It's called Crime Door. <laughs> okay, I'm excited. <laughs> and it's unsolved. It's unsolved murders. Okay. And you can. It's it, the police. <laughs> but there's a map, and you can pick unsolved murders in your area or in yeah. another area, and then you can look at all the information they have <laughs> and collected try to solve them. and try to solve it. Oh. You can actually look at like what? where like the crime scene. Have you solved any? No, but it's really interesting. It's called Crime Door. It's free. I'm downloading if you, it now. Oh wow! And you that can is, look, That's pretty weird and scary. Sh- <laughs> yeah, it is scary. I then <laughs> then sends me things where it's like, well, he'll he'll come up and I'll be watching like ID channel or like murder Investig- mysteries and stuff, and oh, he's I like, love ID. You scare me. Yeah, I've uh, seen some murder mysteries yeah you have life, so well, thank files. you for being honest and yeah. yeah that was that's probably one of the ones <sighs> my hand isn't here now i'm gonna to partake mind. in this weird activity that when was I'm hard alone. to get to see that's why i think he he I honestly i know no, i'm literally mm-hmm. I, you that's guys can why you're on out if that's why like. you're that's <laughs> why you're on stage he spent all day reading all 12 of these questions and planning out what answers. would i say all right all right <laughs> <laughs> Rachel, here's yours. What would be the best and worst part of being a cat, in your opinion? <laughs> what? That, I feel like that's easy. I think the worst part of being a cat would be being a cat. I hate oh. cats. Oh, poor kid. So being hated? <laughs> being hated by yourself? <laughs> Self-loathing. I guess the best part would be they just are mischievous and can do whatever they want to do and get away with stuff because True. they're just evil. I don't know. I feel like Rachel must have been in on this because she had a pretty quick answer. I, well, I had answers for all of them so far. Oh, so no, I think she's ready to go. Oh, well, that was Your short turn. and sweet. I know. I, I didn't take Here's no Eric's. Long. I'm hoping for an easy one. <sighs> what is your favorite scent? What? You, I know. I know. You, you, I, if anybody watches the podcast, Jess. they know Alex has it out for Jess. me yeah. sometimes. It's like, Jess, what's your deepest, darkest secret? Eric, what's your favorite color? Exactly. <laughs> Alex. Alex is no longer in charge Seriously? of the icebreakers, guys. <laughs> no longer. Sint? Yeah. Mm. What do you like to smell? What do you like to sniff, Eric? Well, when me, no one's around. When... <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you about my MLM. Uh, <laughs> I got some great scents. Um, <laughs> lavender. That's thieves. your final answer? No, I, <laughs> I'm i trying to think of what it would be. I, I I don't know anything. Honestly, anything that covers up my, my bulldog because she has the worst flatulence. Mm. And <laughs> so anything that covers that smell up, I like. Um <laughs> I, I don't what I do you don't, usually pick whatever I, I you know sometimes you diffuse something nice um do you wear cologne or anything like that no, or not a cologne a no? person yeah, wife, yeah. anything like I'm not gonna say what you said last I'm not gonna go be more, like I like the smell of my <laughs> do you wife go more fruity or do you go more woodsy I do prefer a fruit 
Okay. Sent, but this is this is getting into a whole f- philosophical thing that's m- m- we don't even need to. <laughs> so what is your favorite scent? Because a lot to... of times it's like when you're picking like a air freshener. Yeah. And then I'm particular about it because I don't want fruit covering up the smell in the bathroom because usually it just merges yeah. into a oh, weird disturbing fruit, fruit yeah, like smell that's more not rancid. Yeah. So I don't want that. <laughs> it's just, so I do prefer a, like a citrus smell. I guess I. I don't know. I don't citrus? think about it. Is that your answer? Citrus. I'll just say citrus because <laughs> this is going nowhere good fast. <laughs> citrus. Okay. All right. There it is. The ice has been broken. Uh, we, yeah. I mean, if you're watching this right now, <laughs> let us know. Answer the questions. Rachel, maybe she'll be watching it and answer. She had answers for all of them. So yeah. I'm excited. Well, yeah, I can looking go in and to... type my other answers up. Yep. All the answers. <laughs> Cannot wait. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we made it through that, thankfully. Uh, Up next, we've got headlines. Our first headline comes from Christianity Today, and it is some sad news uh, that the you know one of the greatest showmen of Christian music, um, (laughs) Carmen, has passed away. Definitely the greatest. I I think probably the greatest showman. Of Christian music? I mean, with music videos and stuff like that, definitely ahead of his time. Are you A2J? I am. Okay, good. Uh, Carmen passed away at 65 due due to complications from a surgery he had a few weeks ago. Um, He encountered some complications with that, and they, you know, sent him back to the hospital recently. Unfortunately, he had passed away. He... Now everyone knows who Carmen is, right? At this table? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> I don't. Uh, I'm sorry. Right. Now, this is probably, I mean, this is definitely a generational thing. He was a huge Christian star in the 80s and 90s. He he was well known for offering free will, con- free will concerts, right? Yeah. Like you could go and he would put on a concert and they would pass an offering plate and you could pay that way. You wouldn't have to pay to go to the concert. And oh, he put wow. on these big productions he had music videos? Is that? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, he was like I... a pop star for Christian music. Interesting. I... Yeah. And his his lyrics were always incredibly bold and very. Um, I don't I don't know how to describe them because they almost felt too preachy in a way, like they were just in your face about Christianity, yeah. <laughs> and and I, it set the tone I think for a lot of mm. the Christian faith in that era in a lot of ways, but a lot of a lot of rap. That was not yes. really that great, but it was. Like I, I loved it as a kid. Theatrical, yeah, oh. music yeah. Videos. I, I mean, Satan if, bite the dust. I was oh. wondering if you brought your boot because <clears throat> Satan bite the dust is a, it, a it, Western theme. It, maybe it's providential. Maybe mm. uh, of us to have the Western theme. But I today. always was mm. like, is Sa- was Satan bite the dust like a Satan <laughs> a Christian bite thriller? The dust. I've got a message to deliver. One who's true and just will speed your eye, you father of lies. Satan, bite the dust. Yeah, it was, Christ, it was, it was. Christian thriller. Yeah, <laughs> it was the Christian thriller. The and Christian the other, thriller. I mean, the other it's, interesting things is he got he had terminal cancer in 2013. Yeah, so he's had that. Uh, I also didn't know he got married for the first time at age 61. So just recently, <gasps> oh, wow. uh, got married. So Aww. that's that's sad. That is really sad. Um, so those are. I haven't f- followed him really since I'm was a kid and so these are mm. kind of interesting new things that I have just learned. So so any any favorite Carmen memories? I'll go first. Thank you for asking. Uh I remember when his show came to town and my mom took me and I think some maybe one of my siblings and yeah, and we paid our like dollar or whatever in the offering plate. It was it was fun. Really, where was it at? I believe it was in Rapid City, South Dakota. Okay. when I was like in kindergarten. Okay. Uh, yeah, but it, I always remember. I th- was it the standard? I think it was 1993. Mm. That album was probably the one I listened to the most as a kid. Uh, it had a lot of, at least the hits that I you know I remember. Um, maybe sometime we could have a Carmen listening party to Ooh, just yeah. go down sing off. Memory, memory yeah. lane. Alex, you would like that. I I would love it. <laughs> I, I also did go to one of his live shows. Um, I'm trying to, I don't remember. I remember like the show. I don't remember where it was, if it was in Lincoln or Scott's Bluff where I used to live. But I do, I honestly remember, and I remember not just watching the music video, which was ahead of its time, but like the 
enactment of Satan bite the dust, like on the stage. Mm-hmm. And like, there was like a, a ring and yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> as a little kid, this was like ultimate larger than life. Like, can't believe I'm at this concert kind of thing. Probably how people feel about like Taylor Swift or how I feel about Justin Bieber now, you know, mm. but yeah. it was big. Mm. Are you saying that Justin Bieber is your modern day Carmen? <laughs> <laughs> he has to make it up to do gonna, with Justin Bieber. Yeah, I do. We're story. gonna have some prayer after another, this. Another day. <laughs> uh, yeah. No. Anyways, <clears throat> it, it's it's tragic. It that is. seems that seems way too. Young. It's like I know. That's what I was thinking. It's and just, tragic that Rachel are, doesn't know. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Is. I don't have a favorite memory. Maybe this <sighs> one right now. <laughs> this is of Carmen. Favorite. Me oh. learning. I can't who say he is. that I have a favorite kind of dark. memory. Except. We're all gonna submit our favorite song to you after this, and then we're gonna listen. I want to. Yeah. Now I kind of want to go listen and like watch his music videos. Satan. Yeah, bite the dust. watch the Satan bite the dust. One. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or any of them where he's rapping a lot. And that's always fun. Uh, who's in the house? JC. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Oh, so good. A lot of great memories. That means so Jesus Christ, yeah. Rachel. Oh, I didn't know, know that, that either. Yeah, yeah. thank you. <laughs> All right, moving on. Next headline comes from KETV. It says Omaha Records. Or, I'm sorry, Omaha records the coldest morning in at least 25 years. Now, this is not an Omaha, Nebraska specific thing. We have seen a cold winter front all over <laughs> blowing yeah. through the whole nation. Now, this probably isn't going to become a normal segment on the podcast where, you know, we have a weatherman and <laughs> give you <laughs> updates. On, and I also feel like whenever you talk about the weather, it's that thing that comes up whenever you're having you a conversation with a stranger. And you don't know what to talk about. You're you just like, oh. Yeah, or an awkward that's conversation with a parent. That is not, I'm that trying to not us. Yeah, explain. That's not what's going on here. But it was very cold. Very um, a lot of people, had, you know, we, we experienced in the Omaha area some rolling blackouts. Yeah. Was anyone at this table affected by those? Yes. Or, okay. we, yeah. we, our power was out for like 40-ish minutes. Yeah. Ours was yeah. out for like an hour for... Alex? I did How not. How's it at West? Yeah, oh, West, that's oh, West. Oh, man, they do not get oh. it. They actually <laughs> did. <laughs> Sitting in his hot tub. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the news article about that? (laughs) Everyone's on gas. So I was good to go. The whole family had, I had us all huddled in there. It was good. Uh, (laughs) While I was driving, I think it was centered towards Dodge. So I live more on the south side of So as you were leaving Krispy Kreme or what? (laughs) There were a lot of lights out on my way into work. Traffic lights because um, of those on the way it's amazing so. how people forget like if a traffic light is out it's a four-way yeah stop. it's a whole new lesson oh, yeah. i would i would like to say that uh over in council bluffs where oh, i yeah, was how was it no power outages we were just enjoying yeah, all all the electricity mm. I, was, Toasty warm. I, I was running just appliances <laughs> for fun you know <laughs> i had my toaster and my blenders on and just, uh, i will have to say no, that's not true i love i love cold weather i love winter and i have been real cold this week and ben did like one of the nicest things for me he had to go he like had to go to the grocery store to pick something up and he like went to walmart and bought me an electric blanket Aww. and i was like oh, that's so sweet. Like, what would I? Add? I don't know. Um, I yeah. never would like want that to Just, be a gift. Yeah. But. Good job, Ben. It, wow. It is it, one of those. This is what we've come to. <laughs> so, so, has anybody not not to get this real political or anything? But has anybody had an awkward conversation where someone was like, "Global warming"? Have you seen any of those? I, I've seen some. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> actually, what I was going to bring up to to Jess there was we've actually been conserving our power, so I wouldn't have plugged in my That's why. electric blanket. <laughs> Here it comes right now because those wow. probably just use a lot more. Yeah. What I said before, but. Uh, Cause that's that how it affected us. Planted. Like we literally, we were probably more <laughs> conscious than we've been with like turning off lights yeah. and like all, you know, yeah. I, I remember my dad, like you're wasting electricity. Now we're like kids, you have to turn it out or they're going to shut it off. Shut it off. <laughs> yeah. But oh, yeah. back to your point, Eric. Yeah. I've seen definitely, uh, it's frustrating because mm-hmm. I've seen all, we can't just not make anything political. Right. Mm-hmm. And right. so it's like, yeah, get off my electric warming blanket. or, you know, people, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're getting more and more control yeah. and this yeah. is like, yeah, like someone grabbed a huge giant fan and froze half of America just so that they could like 
turn off our power. Yeah. And so right. uh, it's kind of frustrating. Wow. I don't think that I actually was that, is what a, was that a conspiracy that's, 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 that you read on, you, on I I think that there's yeah, there's these Careful tentacles, you you the tentacles of, of conspiracy, yeah, can yeah. suck well, up yeah, with any opportunity. For some people, yep. it was kind of like a like, oh, like, I don't have control over this situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I don't have control. Yet again, another year where like, I'm losing yeah. control. They of things. can just turn my electricity off without even you know. And there are mm-hmm. some people in in other parts of the country that still don't have power. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it gets scary sometimes. So I saw. I, I saw another article where someone had, it was a social media um, article where somebody had posted a picture of their house and there were some icicles and they were like, what are these? Like what's <gasps> what, happening what? to my house? Uh, they were scared or <laughs> what's on they my house? Scared. Cause they just didn't know it was oh, a place weird. where they had never been. Oh, oh yeah, like, like yeah. in Texas or something yes, like that. Yes, yeah. Yeah. I was, like, okay. I was thinking these? it was in Omaha. I'm like, oh, mm, no, no, no like, yeah. send help. Yeah. Arkansas got like eight to 10 inches and people are like freaking out. Oh, like, man. like snow day number three. Cause you know, there you don't, you don't go anywhere. You don't do anything. We don't have snow plows. They have to wait for it to melt. So <laughs> <They're> just <stuck. laughs> it's just, wow. yeah, <laughs> until it melts, everybody's just sweating and having fun. Yeah. It, I mean, it is, it, it's scary what you're seeing in Texas right now. I think yeah. millions of people without power mm-hmm. uh, and several cities where they're kind of just been told, well, fend for yourself. Uh, and hopefully we see a warm front come through. I, you know, and it's one of those yeah. things where you don't, we don't need to make this stuff political, but it also, maybe could open up channels of communication where we can have civil conversations about what, what could potentially be affecting this or why, you know, why has the polar vortex been disturbed as much as it is um, to cause these things. But, you know, when you're talking about one thing that's interesting is when you're talking about records, they said that this was the coldest morning in, in at least 25 years. So there, you know, there's, it has been cold before. Before, So it's not, it's not completely you know, a new right. thing, but and still, you know, we can still have civil conversations about this stuff and what might be happening. Free runs us two weeks in a row. I, mean, <laughs> I know. I got some just, of that this week. They don't pay you to take them at that point when it's negative. No, but the oh. amazing thing, like we find anything to complain about. And I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, one of the things I saw yesterday was people were upset because runs us lost their power and they couldn't get their free runs. us. <laughs> Like yeah. I saw people tweeting at like mean tweeting at runs is so mad at them. And yeah, we, we can find anything to complain about. Yeah. Yeah. They're mad because they had their power shut off like everybody else. Did. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> All right. Well that, uh, hopefully we see a warm front coming in. Uh, I think we'll see that coming in from the West. Uh, so everybody, you know, you won't have to bundle up for long. Uh, this is your weather man <laughs> signing off. Uh, <laughs> Up next, we're going to be talking about QAnon and conspiracy theories. QAnon and Christians, you know, where do, where do we draw the line? What is a, a, a reasonable way to talk about it, a reasonable way to discuss this? It has been a topic that has been on a lot of our minds recently. And this episode has probably been close to a year in the making in some ways, just from discussions we've had the past year about different types of conspiracy theories and things that have arisen. And emails. Uh, email, yeah, we've had emails from listeners <laughs> who have uh, requested that we speak into this subject. A real quick disclaimer at the top that, you know, this conversation isn't going to be about debunking conspiracy theories necessarily it's just more about maybe some some of the dangers of QAnon and uh, also just the church in general where you know it should engage with these sorts of things uh, I I thought one maybe kind of a lighter way to get into this conversation would be to discuss personality traits and the way that people are sometimes maybe more susceptible to conspiracies because of their personality types, uh, whether they're more intuition based or they're more factual driven. I think you see two types of people out there a lot. Uh, there's, there's, I I know for myself, I'm typically more of like a, you know, I want, I want to see the facts. I kind of have that teacher mentality where I want to, I want to know someone can tell me something, but I'm not going to believe them until I, you know, see proof. 
And then there are other people who live their lives more based on intuition. And I think you see that mm-hmm. a, a lot of successful business owners and salespeople. So it's, they, they make decisions that are scary to people who are fact driven because they don't, they need to know the facts for someone who bases their decisions on intuition can just kind of pull the trigger on something. I feel uh, like I've seen that a lot in Matt on the season of The Bachelor. Yeah, a lot okay. of intuition okay. as he's as he's letting go of girls. So I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that comparison. <laughs> it's also up. a whole other subject <laughs> right now. Sorry, sorry. So it's good to know that we're Lots Matt. That's what's what was coming through. up in my mind. Dramatic yeah. season just ever. I was like, he keeps, you know, he doesn't leave people on. He just, <laughs> I just not feeling it. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Stop feeling it, girl. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Anyways, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a great example. The Bachelor is always something that we can let's not like, compare our lives to. Uh, but anyways, there was a there was kind of a long article that I read recently that had some interesting stuff in it. It, it had some research done by Eric Oliver, who is a political science professor at the University of Chicago, and. Uh, he's been studying conspiracy theories since the nineties and he has a few questions that he likes to ask people. And I thought maybe we could answer these as a group. And this is, this is to kind of gauge whether you're, you're more factual driven or you're more into intuition, uh, based and your the way you approach the world okay. and things like that. So we'll go around the table and answer these questions. Uh, the first one is, would you rather, these are all would you rather, uh, would you rather stab a photograph of your family five times with a sharp knife or stick your hand in a bowl of cockroaches? For me, I would stab my fo- family photo with a knife without even hesitating because I do not want to stick my hand in a bowl of cockroaches because that's gross. And I would feel that where I know that it's just an image on a piece of paper that I'm stabbing with a knife that it means nothing. Uh, so that's that's my response. But please answer with your gut reaction if you were presented with this question. Cockroaches. <laughs> Instantly, I'm not stabbing a photo yeah. of my family. <laughs> I would put my hand in cockroaches <laughs> over stabbing a photo of my family. Yeah. Okay. Especially since, like, if I stabbed it, it'd probably be on my phone and then I'd break okay, it. Okay, this is a photograph, Alex. <laughs> okay, it's not your but phone. But no, cockroaches. Still same answer. <laughs> same answer. All right. Uh, Jess? My, my answer, w- I don't know. Is it, Would you rather? Because I'm like, I could kind of go either way, depending on the situation. Wait, what's there is no situation. I'm just so like, confused. Okay. How does this determine whether well, you're maybe we'll know pers- or whatever the two things? Well, okay, I think, answer I, think first. Co- I think I would pick cockroaches too. Okay, Chet, I, uh, I'm sorry, Rachel. I just thought it sounds interesting right now. You just that feels that sounds like a feel. I just I thought like about bugs. me stabbing a picture and I just felt really sad and just like okay. Oh yeah. So there you go. Pain. No, like, I was so like, that, why? Okay, that proves that the three of you are more intuition based than factual because the 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 fact of the matter is that stabbing a photo of your family will cause nothing to your family. It is all just symbolism. It doesn't mean anything. And nothing will bad will happen to your family. <laughs> But you're more because you're intuition based. You're like, no, that could be bad. I they might all die if I stab this photo. So I'm gonna put my hand in the ro-. not really, but you know what I mean. It's that gut feeling yeah. where you're trusting your gut instinct. So that's that's kind of a way that it shows that you're <laughs> leaning more towards intuition. Based I could see that than- being a, a piece of research. That, but I don't think it like it's, you can totally I, separate people. I think sure. I think sure. the question could also be symbolic. Yeah, like Alex is you stabbed a picture. Of I know, Aaron? but that, but that, that that's what that's what intuition based would be because you're basing it on this idea of superstition almost that like it it means something that if the, if this is just on if this is just a question presented with you and there's it, there's no symbolism like what you know anyways we'll move on next one <laughs> you're a little curious about the cockroaches no I hate <laughs> bugs I would not. Uh, what if I switched it with the bowl of snakes? Would you? Would you? Oh, st- yeah, <laughs> no, I'd probably go with the picture. I got to say <laughs> okay. that would it change kind of everything. Depends. I think I would go. They're with gardener that. snakes, though they can't hurt you. Still, uh, we didn't know that. Okay. Uh, next one is: uh, Would you sleep in laundered pajamas worn by Charles Manson, or pick a nickel off the ground and put it in your mouth? Which one would you rather do? Oh, I've probably done the nickel. Off the <laughs> I was going to say the pajama. Straight up, straight up remember swallowing a dime at the skating rink. <gasps> so, yeah. You, oh, I you did swallow it? Were you hungry? I don't know. I was a kid. Did oh, it come okay. out? I thought this yeah. was Oh, recently. yeah, it came out. Oh. My, okay. I still have it. <laughs> you still have it? <laughs> In a baggie. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dime bag. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, yeah. anyway, that but is really gross. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, again, it's still... 
it's kind of around that like Kay. oh what's that? I picked the nickel that feel same yeah okay what'd you pick I, in a <laughs> I would say in a, a post COVID world I would probably sleep in the pajamas um, I don't know who put that nickel in their mouth before me. <laughs> uh, so see there's a weird amount of or if it was there. just before so, you yeah. it could have so what is that what does that diagnose us based on this eric guy uh yeah not not me diagnose us. I, think. <laughs> I like how you said eric guy like it was hinting at me uh, no i no, mean it, yeah eric 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 no i did the research right yeah the the charles manson thing leans more towards intuition based okay. because you're going oh this could oh, these could it. be evil possessed pajamas that i'm sleeping in you know <laughs> or something so that's why people are scared to sleep in those pajamas. All right. okay. um all right last one would you rather grind your heels into an unmarked grave or stand in the line for three hours at the dmv i do that anyways at the dmv <laughs> <laughs> if you had if you're forced to do one of those oh uh, yeah i'd oh, stand yeah. in line same. Over digging yes. your heels into a grave. Well, yes. I, no, I would. Yeah, I would dig my heels in a grave. Actually. Yeah. Like if a, just an unmarked Gra- grave. Yeah. You yeah. don't know who was buried there. Just like nah, real no. quick, <laughs> dig my heels in. Or you got to go stand in line for three hours. Yeah, I would you, do that. I value my time. Okay. More. Get so, some reading done. I'll stand in line. N- and again, I don't bring these up to say. What's your answer? Oh, me? I yeah, heels in grave all day. Okay. Uh, all day. <laughs> all day long <laughs> instead of three okay, hours. Okay, but oh, that's gosh. like your respect thing. Yeah, I actually I don't, don't even see it as like, yeah. oh, somebody's going to come out of the right. grave. It's it more of a like, oh, this like, is like someone. I respect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. Cemeteries. I, so this isn't to say one is better than the other. I, this is no thing to split yeah. the room. It's a way to show how we kind of engage with the world and but it also kind of helps us understand when the, these things, the way we look at the world is a lot about trying to understand the world that we're in. And so kind of understanding the way your mind works will show why sometimes maybe we lean towards a conspiracy theory and even maybe one conspiracy theory over another because of the way that our personality traits are just the way that we're made. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing. It just kind of helps us understand that. I'm straight up skeptical and, and, and I'm skeptical. Like for me to like, I'm just skeptical of even like that, mm-hmm. which uh, that's just anything to yeah, me. I'm like, I'm skeptical. Like, I don't know this guy. I mean, I could see it. I could see based on my intuition. I could see, okay, I could see how people I could see go those ways. You giving Eric those questions. Cause you came up with those questions. I did not come up with those questions. <laughs> I, whenever you said personality. So I was thinking like, like Enneagram. So like, if I think about oh, the Enneagram, okay. like I am a one on the Enneagram. And so, especially with this specific theory that we're going to talk about, I want, there's a right, there's a black and white, there's right and wrong, there's good mm-hmm. and bad, and I want good to prevail. And so with a the- conspiracy theory like this, it's like, I want good to pre- prevail. And if I see this theory where it's like, man, there's evil, like, like, and there, you know, this mm-hmm. is how good can, can overcome. I feel like any personality mm-hmm. can fall into conspiracy theory, p- right. theories based on different qualities or characteristics mm-hmm. that, you know, Absolutely. cause them to, f- so I don't, I guess I just feel like anybody can. <laughs> yeah. Just depending on what it is. Absolutely. I, and I, I don't, again, I think that was just kind of for me to, at least personally, that was a fun example to go, Oh, this is, this is kind of the w- telling way that people look at the world mm-hmm. because I do think there is some, there's a, a, a little bit of uh, superstition involved. There's a little bit of, of even believing in karma or something where maybe we shouldn't. Uh, anyways, let's talk a little bit about what QAnon is for people who maybe are not familiar with it. it. I know we've mentioned it on this podcast a couple times in the past, and then and that was even before it really became prominent in the public eye. Uh, first question, and feel free to you know dive in whoever wants to answer some of these questions. But where did it come from? Does anybody have a good answer for that that they would like to share? The internet. The internet. So I there think it go. came from the internet. Uh, my understanding is there is a guy who is Q, who who and that depends on or, who you talk guy to. Or gal. It could be a collective. Yeah, it could be a collective. Yeah, that's... But somebody who says that they are ranked in high intelligence, have high reason for providing information that they posted it on uh, some, you know some kind of site on the internet stuff that's uh, being hidden from the yeah. public eye mm-hmm. essentially and so somebody that's got information that not everybody has they're high ranking in in the um in the u.s government and so they're giving information in cryptic ways not always straight up here's the fact but saying hey here's things that i'm seeing and then throw out kind of 
mysterious kind of ways for people to kind of take that as they will and then and then lead themselves to start to believe those things and so mm-hmm. it's a per like for my understanding and the research that I've done it's it's a person um behind this could be a collective but at least they're trying to pro- project as a as a person yeah mm-hmm. nobody else okay yeah, that's. I think that's a pretty good description. And I, I think it began with like child trafficking, <clears throat> right? I mean, right. That, that was kind of the next thing is what's some of their core beliefs. Mm-hmm. And initially, it was, you know, there that there is a a left wing kind of you know, f- depending on who you talk to in this, that's they believe that that the, there's a left wing uh, v- almost vampire cabal who is eating children or at least trafficking sex trafficking children and they, it started out slowly as just sex trafficking and then it, it moved into these bigger broader kind of more f- fantastical uh things and they also one of their core beliefs is that donald trump was sent by god to put an end to all of this See, that's when i remember starting to hear about QAnon. is i think it was around the time before um, Trump was elected president. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how long it's been going on before that. My mm-hmm. knowledge doesn't really go too far back, but yeah, that's definitely when it is that surfaced, when, it, yeah. when it surfaced, right? Cause it used to be kind of on the back mm-hmm. web and then mm-hmm. yep, more in social media. Right. Um, okay. And then let's talk a little bit about what makes it appealing and draws people in. I think, I mean, I think Rachel, you kind of hit on it. There is the the good and evil thing. Mm-hmm. I it think. appeals to things that people ca- care, care about, right? Mm-hmm. That they're mm-hmm. well, sex trafficking is bad, so therefore this must be good because they're trying to end it. And a lot of people that I have seen, like researching it recently, like how it was even how it's even distributed is on TikTok, and you don't realize that it's. Mm-hmm a QA non thing. It's just somebody talking about something they heard or it's on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Right. A lot, a lot of people, I mean, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, you name it, any type of social media, they have shared QA non ideas and, and conspiracy theories without even knowing that that's the origin of them. It's, and I think wanting, like you're saying, Rachel, going back to personalities, like wanting mm-hmm. to help wanting mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. figure out what's going wrong. Mm-hmm. how they can help yeah all that yeah i think one of the i think we are all built with a, a god-given quest for what truth is and mm-hmm. I, I, if you get into romans one you know it talks about that theologically mm-hmm. that we're all built with this this wonder about how did we get here what is right and i think how it's exploded especially this year is this year has been crazy Mm -hmm. there's so many things outside of our control and we want to know answers Mm -hmm. we we're just people that fill in the gaps we write our own stories Mm -hmm. i know Brene brown has done a lot of research on how we do write our own stories Mm -hmm. and our own narrative Mm -hmm. because we're people that want to fill in the gaps and yeah i mean i think from a, a christian you know if it starts like you said with babies and saving lives and human mm-hmm. trafficking yeah. instantly. Like I want to be on the team that says that's righteous. Mm-hmm. That is a righteous cause yeah. and there's evil. And we also know that there's evil in the world. And right. so it's not very hard for us to, to start to think, okay, mm-hmm. there's good, there's evil, mm-hmm. there's people. We've seen people in power, even unfortunately inside of the church. And we'll talk more about that next week mm-hmm. that use yeah. their power to manipulate Mm -hmm. and to get more power. I mean, throughout world history, that's Mm -hmm. just been a part of it. So we know that there's in the per, per whatever, perfume, peripheral, peripheral. Peripheral. That's the word I'm looking for that. As we just glance at history that we know there's Mm -hmm. been people that have done things like that. And so to have Mm -hmm. that uh, initial thought, Oh yeah. Some of the stuff could be happening. I think Mm -hmm. is what the initial suck in that the tentacles grab. Well, onto and you us. see movies like this all the time, like mm-hmm. just of like leadership doing things. I mean, that is just like. I mean, there's a movie, yeah, with Mel Gibson, like yeah. conspiracy theory, where it ends up being right in the end. Right. I've watched yeah. it. I don't know how many times with yeah. my dad. I mean, yeah, that's already something yeah. that's kind of out there. But yeah, and and with the truth thing too. I think so it's like what? even for like non Christians, people want to know the truth and mm-hmm. to feel like 
the whole propaganda thing or feel like people could be lying to you or leading you astray, that is not a good feeling. Like you, you don't want to be, you know, led astray and you want to find what's true. And so that's just hard. It's hard to find a source that's going to be giving the truth and, and telling you what's actually going on. And so I'm sure people who even aren't Christians are looking for that truth and maybe have stumbled upon this and been like, Oh, they're actually trying to share what's really happening with us. I don't know. Mm Mm-hmm. And peace and emotional satisfaction. I think there's a deep sense of emotional tie to this. Like mm-hmm. we, it, it's emotionally satisfying to feel like you have the answer or to be able to explain. It gives things. you. It f- makes it puts you in a position where you feel like you're in control. Yeah. Of, of things that are going around you that are unexplainable, and and there with something like QAnon, there are answers to all of your questions. And then I think what we saw even in 2020 with a pandemic here again, they were right there ready to have an answer for everyone's questions. And this is something that we haven't experienced in this generation. What's going on? This must be bigger than than just a, a, you know, a virus. There must be something bigger at play because Mm -hmm. as humans, we want to make, you know, we want to understand our world better. Mm-hmm. And that is a that is a part of control, and that's something that we talked about a lot this past year. Is you know relinquishing some of that control that we don't have. It's it's more of a facade. But well, going into these conspiracy theories, I think it, it's a way for people to grasp at those ideas. And it plays on fears that are that are logical. You know, yeah. I think mm-hmm. in a world where and we think, hey, could could there be warfare that's cyber warfare, mm-hmm. or could there be warfare where people are mm-hmm. doing kind of medical you know, things right. and dropping, I mean, think about anthrax. And when that was kind of this freaky thing, we know that there's bio yeah. war that could happen that literally could happen. And so you can play on the fears of people with something that could be a possibility and then like take it to a next level. I heard somebody explain it like QAnon as like a started as like a, an octopus. And then it like, now it's like a 20 tentacle octopus. Mm-hmm. Like it just keeps, keeps growing arms and grabbing whatever it can and, and sucking, the new things that happen into its grasp. Right. And I think that, and it, to even further that example, when one of those arms gets cut off, it grows another one. And I think we've seen some of those arms get cut off recently with the storming of the Capitol building with Biden being elected. There are a lot of, of theories that were being disseminated through QAnon that people believed that did not come true. And so then, you know, there's, then they just come back and go, okay, well, now we're hearing about this March 4th thing where, well, Trump is coming back on March 4th as the 25th president. Um, and there, again, you hit on it earlier, Alex, with fear. It is, it is, it speaks to humanity so much in that area of our lives where we are afraid. And, and, and some of the people who maybe really believe this the most are the people who would be too proud to admit that they're afraid. Um, but it is a thing where fear creeps in and you, again, how do I fix this problem? I need to control it. I need to have answers. What are, uh, ha- have any of us uh, had any experiences personally with these QAnon conspiracy theories, whether it's family, friends, or just seeing it on social media, or has it affected anything in your day-to-day life? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's interesting that you said you heard about it, like, I guess four or five years ago and I had never heard about it honestly until this year I feel like I I think everybody saw a surge in like popularity with it during (laughs) you know the shutdowns and lockdowns because Mm -hmm. like everybody's at home nobody has anything to do you're in your thoughts you're in your own world and you're just kind of on the internet and I feel like it got some popularity there and I think for me that's where I first even like initially heard about it and was like oh what is this I was just kind of intrigued mm-hmm. and then I kind of got into it a little more and saw you know like the core thing of just like child trafficking well obviously you know like I said earlier I was like that's not okay like that's not good like I don't want to hear that that's happening and kind of dove into it a little bit more and after a, a while I think I kind of was getting pretty into it like researching it and stuff and then I kind of had I took a moment where I was like whoa okay I need to take a step back from this like I was experiencing anxiety and fear and I wasn't you know I was spending a lot of time researching this and trying to figure out what was going on and like um I was just kind of like man there's some 
this is impacting my relationship with God. I'm not spending as much time with him and like seeking him first and, and praying with, and um, this is also taking a lot of my time from relationships and just impacting other relationships I have with people um, and just fear and anxiety and just like feeling the weight. I mean, it is when you, when you go into it and start really looking into it, it is really heavy weighty stuff that they're talking about. And if you really get into that, it can be a lot to handle. And there was a lot of that. I just felt the weight of that and just realizing, man, that is not what God has for me. That is not, he doesn't want me to have fear or anxiety or stress or all these things. He wants me to have peace and and joy. And so had to take a step back from that. So that was my own personal experience Mm -hmm. with it. Uh, Yeah. I mean, I can, I can relate to people who have gotten into researching this and, and, figuring out what it is so yeah I think for me I haven't necessarily had a bad experience like with someone that enjoys the QAnon information gathering like every every interaction I've had hasn't been someone that's trying to convince me but it's more like giving information and I think Mm. I can remain pretty neutral in the middle of even like hearing something pretty that seems almost unbelievable because of it's kind of because of my profession. Right. So it's Mm -hmm. like, I hear things all the time that I would never believe that break my heart, that shock me Mm -hmm. that are real, real true things. So for me, like how I've kind of reconciled it to myself is I almost have to pull my emotions out of it. So maybe I'm not presenting like my full self in a conversation, but it's like, okay, I I can listen. Mm -hmm. But like we are talking about fear, like I have to pull that back. Like that can't, can't be there. And like my emotions, I have to just really stay in control of like, these cannot be heightened. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm a person that when I hear information at some point, and it goes again back to my profession. Like I need to see a fact. I need to see a result. I need to see like the statistics of like how this has played out. And so I think I, I've respectfully have listened to people. And so I've had, I mean, if we're talking about this conspiracy theory, like I ha- can't say I've had a bad one, but also have to be very self-aware in the middle of it. Mm. Cause I, I do mm-hmm. think that there's that tendency to start this debate and you know that you're you know people on both sides it's like you 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 know you're like right on the edge of something and so I can kind of feel that and so Mm. I I think like if anything like I kind of pull back a little bit and withdraw and just try to stay neutral waiting Mm -hmm. for okay Mm -hmm. Mm. let's see what happens yeah Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna join you but like okay let's see some some actual evidence happening Mm -hmm. that's good yeah, I mean, I have, I don't know that I, I know anybody that is going directly to the source, you know, so going to like the actual place that mm-hmm. um, that this all began, but I know a lot of people that have like, hey, maybe a couple of the tentacles mm-hmm. to go on with the octopus thing have, have sucked them in and pulled them in and they try to explain it to me and, and you know, they're really passionate about it. Um, and so I, you know, I sit and listen. I, I, I know that I'm a heretic in some ways that I don't even know. And so there's part of me that gives some grace for it, but then there's also part of me that's like, mm-hmm. okay, every, every most of these people that I'm hearing it from, I just sense a deep fear mm. in in their uh, evangelism of me to mm. to try to show me that this is true. And and I also I sense a deep love for mm. me, which is partially mm-hmm. why they're yeah. they're mm-hmm. trying to you know, show this to me. I feel that too. And, Mm -hmm. and so, and and part of it is, yeah, it's people that are are searching for truth. And I, I want to be along the quest with somebody searching for truth. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I haven't, I haven't had anybody honestly, um, you know, I, I guess I could say I've been around people that I'm like, (laughs) That smells like QAnon, mm-hmm. QAnon, but not someone that's like, like maybe they stepped in the pile real mm-hmm. fast and they got away from it, but not somebody that's like been fully like, okay, they've totally steeped themselves yep. in it. Mm-hmm. And so that's mm-hmm. kind of my experience. Mm-hmm. And I think there's, I think there's definitely varying levels of it. And I don't, I think mm-hmm. earlier, like we said that 
people don't maybe necessarily know where the sources of this information it gets shared in a, a video a youtube video a meme form uh and that's that's their source for uh, speaking from personal experience i definitely experienced it a lot personally this past year um in several different ways through family uh th- and it's just one of those things where anytime you're so confident in something that you believe and you it's a it's hard to have any type of conversation that's going to end civilly and mm. uh, where people can walk away from that going well you know maybe maybe there's a little truth in everything but you know mm-hmm. whatever it's it's either all or nothing mm-hmm. and it does become it does become personal on a lot of levels for people if you don't believe them when they're telling you this stuff and there's but but I also feel a strong responsibility not to play in to their beliefs I, I maybe that's just my personality trait I don't know but I feel a personal responsibility to to do that because if I if I just to go along with it and let them tell me this stuff it, it it's fuel to the fire because then they're like okay I I saved one more person I got to go now I can save someone else mm-hmm. um and it, there needs to be some conflict that happens when someone is so deeply lost to these ideas that they dictate their lives. They dictate. I mean, when you see something as impactful as hundreds of people storming our U.S. Capitol building, based on a lot of com- QAnon conspiracy theories that led them to that point, I know that 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 can paint a broad stroke where and that in itself can be dangerous because you don't want to just say, well, just because someone believes a little part of this doesn't mean they're that person who would do that. But there are some serious conversations that need to happen because you don't know where people are. You, I'm sure a lot of those people who were in the videos that we saw have family members going, I had no idea they were that serious about this until they ended up there Mm. doing that. And so I think there are obvious warning signs that you can see in, in your loved ones. And, you know, and, it, and it's hard because this conversation tends to devolve into intelligence and, 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 and name calling. At the mm-hmm. end of it, it becomes mm-hmm. it became, becomes either someone who doesn't believe it says, you know, well, you're stupid or dumb because you believe this, you know, silly make believe mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. And then they're telling you. Well, you're a sheep and you're ignorant and you're mm-hmm. you're dumb because you're you're just willing to listen to what the media is telling you and you're willing to look. So it's this two way yeah. street where both people end up just walking away thinking the other person is a complete yeah. idiot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, which is really incredibly unhealthy. Uh, so mm-hmm. I think I think when we're talking about this event within the church, how can these conversations be fruitful? How can they? How can they? How can we show love to one another? Mm-hmm. It's it's really difficult. It is. It's thing. hard to navigate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we have a. I mean, part of it is we have a theology that there's sin, and that there's good, that there's evil inside of our world, and so I think that's a part of the things that pulls us back is that mm-hmm. there is good, there's evil, there's right, there's wrong. There, there's we're not wrestling against flesh or blood, but powers and principalities, which Romans six talks about, and then it gets into the fruit, not the fruit of the spirit. It gets into the armor of God that we need to use Mm -hmm. to protect our lives. And, and so I think we all know that there's evil in the world, you know, especially from a Christian worldview. And and unfortunately those are the people I've seen, um, get sucked in the most. And and maybe it's also because if I'm looking at my Facebook friends and the people I hang around with more, it's believers, you know, Mm -hmm. if, you know, it's probably 80% of my Facebook friends are probably people that are, you know, churchgoers or, or whatnot. And so obviously I'm going to see that a little bit more, but I think because we have this understanding and then I think where it starts to get dangerous is when we can start to, instead of putting the target on the enemy, on Satan, mm. we can start to put the target on, on other people mm. as evil. And I think that's part of what, what the QAnon conspiracy has done is mm. it's, it's said mm. that people, 
people are actually mm-hmm. agents. Uh, they're on Satan's team. Mm-hmm. And so therefore, I can start to hate you because they're, they're doing these cabals, mm-hmm. that they're killing kids, they're doing kids child sacrifices. Mm-hmm. And so they're literally working. They're working for Satan, and I'm working for God. Mm-hmm. And so instead of like hating Satan, that Satan, these are minions, like that mm-hmm. these are... And so I can start to justify my hate for these people yeah. because I'm starting to see them as as Satan's minions mm-hmm. and that that I'm fighting for God against these evil satanic people. And we mm-hmm. we've seen the satanic kind of stuff or at least the church do this throughout its history, you know, kind of pigeonhole certain people as Lucifer's, you know. Mm-hmm real satan you know and we've we've had serious conversations about you know demon possession and things yeah. like that but mm-hmm. i think that's where it really starts to turn for some people is you can start to justify your hate of people that god created mm. because you think that they really have have sold out to satan and yeah. I, and yeah i mean i've heard that like that these people have literally sold out to satan like that uh what's his name tom hanks and yeah. and hillary clinton and these mm. people really like have a blood pact and like with satan and that they're doing his bidding for mm-hmm. him mm-hmm. which i think just kind of touched on this earlier too but when you hear real life stories of terrible things happening it makes it easier to believe yeah. Th- that even crazier things could be happening. Yeah. Right. But I think the the nuance that gets left out in something like these conspiracy theories is that they want to tell you this is organized, that this is a big thing, this is global, this is worldwide. And the truth is evil is global. Evil mm-hmm. is worldwide. But the nuanced side of it is when we see this these child sex trafficking things come up and when we see th- examples of that in the real world, they're they're isolated incidents. This isn't a big underground organization. And so here again, we're co-opting a real idea into a fictional idea and then spreading that, you know, because because it 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 allows it to snowball more, it gives it more energy, it brings more people on, it sounds more interesting. And in the last year alone, we've seen QAnon co-op a lot of people evangelicals have been co-opted into it so now this is a righteous war that we're fighting this is this is for you know for god then you've you know flat earthers have gotten in on it anti-vaxxers it's these little pockets of conspiracy theorists who believe in things that can tend to be isolating when you believe a certain way because it's hard to get people to see it your way because you're like hey no i this is i'm this is really important to me and I'm really passionate about this thing you should look at it and a lot of times that can lead to a very isolated lonely existence when nobody wants to listen to your thing and now with QAnon we've seen this co-opting happen with all these people going hey I'll listen to your conspiracy theory if you listen to mine and it becomes this bigger much more organized thing that we're seeing because of that and because of the internet and the problem that I have with it most is that when we're using this type of stuff in debates with one another about politics, religion, whatever it might be. And it just becomes ammunition to win an argument. And it's, well, did you know Hillary Clinton <laughs> eats babies or yeah, whatever? Yeah, it's like one-upping one each other with different facts. Which you're just mm-hmm. slandering people, you're name-calling, you're, you're, you're lying about something just to win an argument. And I think a lot of times that this goes on so many levels, but the most surface level that we see is just the pettiness that it has bred amongst even Christians, where they are just willing to say kind of terrible things, act certain ways that is not Christ-like, just to be right about about politics, about who should be president, about who did what. And, mm-hmm. and then someone could come along with a list of conspiracy theories and they don't even take the time to look into it. They don't take the time to investigate if that's true mm-hmm. or not. They just pile it on onto the fire because it's easier to do that to win the argument. And I think what we see on both sides is that people want to be the savior. Mm-hmm. Like people want to save the other person f- for the other side or, and especially with Christians, people want to people to love God and follow God. So you see that you're trying to take on this savior role of like, I, I need you to get, I need you to get over here. I need you to get over here. But the reality is we're n- none of us are going to be able to do that. None of us are the savior. You know, the Holy spirit is going to have to work and move in people's lives in mm-hmm. order for any change to happen. I mean, we can, we can help 
guide people a little bit, but we cannot take the weight of, Mm -hmm. I have to save all these people and make sure that they know, you know, I don't know. I just think sometimes it's just such a big weight to try and take that on your shoulders of, I need to save everyone. Um, And so I think you see why that gets so personal and and like Mm -hmm. when you're just so excited Mm -hmm. about doing it because you feel that weight and you feel that pressure. And so I think I see that a lot too in these conversations that get so heated and Mm -hmm. divisive. Um, And then it's just like, man, it's out of a heart. Like you have to, it's out of a heart of love and like caring for someone else and really wanting people to know the truth and wanting them to be on one side or the other. But then it leads to Mm -hmm. not good things. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So how, you know, yeah. And I I think Alex, you, uh, maybe this was in a previous conversation, but you even kind of, compared it to drug addiction where you where sometimes people will see someone who is struggling with something like this and you want to be able to show them the best way that you can that hey there's a better there's a better life out there for you there's a better option for you but then you know the more you tell someone something who is in a predicament or they don't believe that you 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 ultimately tend to push them away um yeah and i, I think for me and this is like, Hey, pastor hat. And I can't help but put it on sometimes, but, um, is it, a lot of it comes down, especially for the Christian to our theology and how, and even Carl came on a few weeks ago to talk about hermeneutics and how we understand scripture and the narrative of scripture, because, and we've talked about this before, you know, people kind of comparing themselves to we're, we're all Daniels and, you know, America is we're all living in exile. And yes, there is truth to that. We are exiles. We are people. This is not our home. All of that kind of stuff. Uh, and then we see pieces of scripture. You know, we see uh, in scripture people that are heroes defying the government. Mm-hmm. We see that in Daniel and his friends. We see that in Rahab hiding spies, you know. And mm-hmm. so then we can take uh, overlay what we see in scripture and then start to say, that was, that's. I'm them Mm -hmm. and that's what God's called me to. And then we can start to get into dangerous places without understanding the whole narrative of scripture and and starting to overlay our 21st century um, experiences, the things that we're going through. Especially especially culturally, because you look at what they were going through, what their government was compared to what our government is. Yes, there is corruption within the government. Yes, there are bad things going on, but it is nowhere near as corrupt and evil as it was in those times, or at least the, what was happening to those people be, that was being perpetrated by the government. So then when you look at it culturally, you know, that you can't always, it's not always apples to apples. Yeah. And I, I think that, yeah. So I, I see how without a proper understanding or a proper narrative, understanding of the narrative of the hermeneutic of scripture, uh, man, and that's a sad thing is we abuse and use you know, misuse scripture all the time. And I've actually seen this, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, some of the mm-hmm. images during that capital storming from Christians, just heartbreaking that they're doing some of these things in the name of Jesus. Like th- that's some of the stuff that really, you know, drew out some of the emotion in me is that they're doing this thinking that like they're, they're doing this for Jesus and they're making me look bad. They're making mm-hmm. Christians look bad. And so that's where it gets difficult because you're just like, man, I, you don't, I don't think you really have a great understanding. But then if I tell them that I'm the heretic, I'm the one that's got it all wrong. I, I have no clue. And, And I think that's why we have to study scripture together. That's why there has to be accountability. That's why a lot of those things that Carl pointed at really, if you don't do that well, if you don't spend time in scripture daily, if you're not spending time with God, you know, daily and letting him correct and, and, and all those things to your life, then it's easy to get sucked into, to this kind of stuff. And sometimes Christians are the worst. We had Dave, uh, a guy, Dave Montoya, who used to be on staff here. We did a whole entire, and this, this is a little different. His is more extreme. Like he got sucked into a full cult where you're living mm-hmm. in that kind of experience. Uh, but I think it's just easier to do when you uh, isolate yourself, like you were saying, Eric, when you live in loneliness, mm-hmm. when you have bad things happening in your life, when people can prey on you, that those are the most vulnerable people, I think. Mm-hmm. Sorry, what were you saying, Jess? 
I don't think I said anything. Oh. But I, I'm thinking, I mean, I think some of those people are susceptible, but there's also people that are extremely knowledgeable and smart and intelligent that are looking at the same information too. So I think to to what you're saying, Alex, is just reminding, rem, remembering like, where is our concrete information? It has mm -hmm. to start in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. what does our relationship with the Lord look like? And how are we looking at the people and the world? It should be, I would hope through a lens of what Jesus is showing us in scripture. Yeah. And so I think it's really important to remember, I mean, mm -hmm. hermeneutics and to be in environments where you can have conversations with lots of different people. I think one of our goals has always been when we're talking about this, we don't always align, mm -hmm. but like we're always going to dialogue about this in a healthy way and we're not going to debate because what does that at the end of the day help like mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. i think sometimes debate is good um and i think like there's a healthy way to do that too mm -hmm. um but yeah so i'm glad we're i'm glad we're able to have this conversation and just for everybody's ideas mm -hmm. and, and when you throw god into it we all want to be closer to god and that's a good longing but when we have insider information from God, you know, or we understand the Morris code that's in scripture, that, that's why I loved what we did revelate our series on revelation mm -hmm. and broke it down in, uh, with proper hermeneutics and proper understanding of what end times yeah. thing is because forever people have been using the book of revelation as this crazy thing that it was never even meant to be used as like, if you mm -hmm. don't understand how, who John's was writing this book to like an actual church that was actually living at that time, but also to us, then man, you can do wacky, crazy things mm -hmm. with almost any book of, of the Bible. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think that's important. Right. Just think about like Proverbs three, five and six. It's like, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Right depending on where we're at in our lives, like when I just said that, like it means something different to us. Yeah. So it's like how we're interpreting it, how we're feeling, how we're seeing it. It means something different to each yeah. of us when I said that. And it's just. Mm -hmm. And even like God defeat my enemies, like go in and defeat my enemies and like destroy them completely, you know, stuff like that. It's like, Man, it could get so tricky when you're starting to pull stuff out of the Bible like that and apply it to something else. Especially when we see it in the context of a, of a, the Capitol building where people are quoting that scripture and saying, yeah. we, we're going to hang Mike Pence or we're going to kill Nancy Pelosi because they're our enemy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like come back to the core of mm -hmm. the gospel. But and, I th e even is. in the 80s and 90s, we saw a big draw to Bible code where people would count mm -hmm. count the letters in the scripture and count so many in, and then they would say, this means that or whatever. And that even harkens to what we see with QAnon. They'll look at a, a, a tweet from Donald Trump and they'll say, well, see this many words in, he said this, and then look at how many... Uh, you know, look at the time he tweeted it and then they would try to make that into a message as well, which it's just obviously that isn't even possible because the way technology works, you, you can't use these random things to prove something. And yet people are so desperate to have these answers that they're willing to believe that stuff. And one of the, the things I've found helpful, and this is, um, I, I was teaching our residents a preaching cohort. And I think one of the things I've learned through preaching is that there is, there's a temptation for me to go up on stage when I, when I'm teaching anybody and, and teach something that they have never heard, mm -hmm. you know, to unlock a piece of scripture that they have never heard. And when I am not emotionally healthy, like when I, and that's why I love that we have a message team here that we're studying this together, that we're asking some of those difficult questions, but when I'm not emotionally healthy uh, and I don't preach out of emotional health, Mm -hmm. then I'm, I pander to that. Mm -hmm. Then I want to, man, what, you know, I, I, I seep things and I, I try to squeeze things out of a text that aren't there, but they sound good and they sound really current and it, mm -hmm. you know, it's tweetable. And so when I'm not, when I'm not leading people or teaching scripture, then it, I want to get sucked in and it, I, I think it's partially on me as, as the communicator and not wanting, not being humble, people seeing me, but then part of it is on like the church, you know, that sometimes there's expectations of like, well, if you didn't teach me something I didn't know, 
then you you obviously aren't spending time with God. And so there's this this two way pressure that I think we feel as Christians. And so that's what can pull us into some of uh, some of this stuff. I think as well. It's mm-hmm. like we that Bible code stuff that mm-hmm. you're talking about. It's, yeah. It's always been around, and it's, mm-hmm. it happens now. You know, between versions of the Bible mm-hmm. and who's better and what's better, and and we can really spend a lot of time on these things and become pretty useless anemic Christians. I think. Mm-hmm. So, speaking to that, then what what is the church's responsibility to people who have been consumed by something like QAnon? They've been deceived. They. There's, they are sowing discord within the body because of the things that they believe. What is, you know, our personal responsibilities within that community? What is, you know, a, pers- a responsibility of someone like you who is a minister to address some of these concerns? Where, and I mean, everybody can chime in. I am kind of directing this at Alex, but I, I do wonder what are some of your, your feelings around that? Yeah. Anybody else? I, no, you don't want to answer I, that. Can I get a drink of water? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Real fast. I think for me, especially when I'm looking at social media, when I'm looking at the church, I am. I'm always like, I am not going to fan a fire that feels like it's packed with an attack. Like you can pretty much discern with the words that people choose to use if Mm -hmm. we're if they're you know if it's a genuine question or statement or if it's like okay church answer this or why aren't we doing this address this give me an answer now i mean Mm -hmm. there's just a lot of different ways to communicate and so i think i've said it in the past about even social media but that's just right where i went eric Mm because i feel like during the week that's where we see a lot of people it is um Mm -hmm. i will not engage and fan that fire. I mean, and it's yeah. more, maybe more personal conversations that I would have. And I do have those, but it's not going to be fanning the flame of maybe somebody else that isn't, isn't emotionally where I'm at or hasn't had the same life experience where I'm at. I mean, cause it's, it's like there are people, we're leaders no matter where, what we're at. When you're mm-hmm. putting something out on your phone, mm-hmm on your computer. I mean, there's somebody else that's maybe looking up to you that's saying, okay, mm-hmm. what are you, what are you doing? How are you going to respond? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's- and I feel like I haven't ever, ha- I haven't really had a ton of in-person conversations about any of this. Like a not, not a lot of people are just bringing this up in person and conversations like that. And so I feel like a lot of it is on social media. And so I think maybe taking time to bring that off of social media mm-hmm. and maybe you notice someone is, you know, talking about, some of this stuff and it's just like, Hey, let's have an in-person conversation. I'd love to hear more about that and kind of just talk with you about that because anything, I just feel like anything on social media can be just heightened and taken the wrong way, taken, you know, you can say something and it can be taken the wrong way and lead to just miscommunication. And so I just really think taking some things off of social media, like this, a conversation like this is pretty helpful. But then the people that do choose to have the, debates i'm like okay let's read all these comments <laughs> and, and I, I, like I, let's I, see what's going on. i mean you know what i mean yeah so. but i think when you're talking about the church specifically there is there the, the church as a whole not just ccc but the whole, whole hasn't done a great job of of teaching people how to responsibly consume mm-hmm. media and the, the world around them and not that they're gonna be like hey this is how you watch the news but hey this is how we guard our soul towards mm-hmm. untruths this is how we guard ourselves and 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 look through these things through a biblical lens because sometimes it just felt like well it didn't matter it was separate it was this is polit- politics this is religion it doesn't matter this is but now we've seen this thing where many christians have had a role model like donald trump who have taught them to speak a certain way to call their enemies names to call people they disagree with enemies where really it's just a disagreement and then and to not work with them and just to shut them down or to have the you're fired mentality uh And I've seen it in my own family where they start to model the characteristics of this man. Mm -hmm. And where was the church to say, hey, that's not okay. Just because maybe he's fighting for something that you agree with, it isn't okay to demonize these people who we disagree with because, again, they are still humans. I think we see Paul and, you know, to the the leaders in Ephesians 
telling them to guard, you know, to guard the, the the guard Ephesus from untruths and from threats that are coming in to the church that are going to threaten the church body. And I think something like QAnon came along and caught a lot of us by surprise because we didn't know because these things happen in dark corners. They happen in dark places on the internet where people are isolated and alone in their house and they're doing quote unquote their own research. And it leads to these dark places where people are now not looking at their fellow human being as someone that they should love and care for, but as the enemy. Yeah. I think that that's so good. And I think as as Christians, we have a duty to be able to, in a real way, give reason for the hope that we have. Uh, Peter talks about it in, in 1 Peter three fifteen. He says, but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord, always be, pre- be prepared to give an answer to anyone who asks for the reason of hope you have, but do this in gentleness and respect. And so I think we all have to offer real evidence, not like evidence that's just based off of me reading on the internet or whatever, but real evidence for like the hope that we have and the real evidence for the hope that we have. Even Paul talks about, he's like, man, this all is trash. If Jesus didn't die and resurrect from the dead, then everything, this is all wacky. It's all weird. It's all wild, but everything that we're placing our faith on is staked on Jesus coming, living a life that was perfect, being a a sacrifice that could be sufficient for our sins, Mm -hmm. dying, and then being resurrected, proving that he has power over sin. And, and so we have to have real substantive answers for that kind of stuff. And yeah, you said, Paul, he talks about it in in Timothy as he's writing to the church of Ephesus. He tells them in Macedonia, he's like, you have to, in Timothy uh, one, three, he says, stay there and you need to command certain people not to teach false doctrines any longer, to devote themselves to myths, endless genealogies, things that promote controversial speculation rather than advancing God's work, which is by faith. Mm. And I think the difficult part is unless we do work and theology in tandem with others and invite others that even maybe see and understand scripture differently, mm-hmm then we just create these echo chambers and then we we don't have humility to admit that when we're wrong. And it's difficult. Man, there's been some theological things I've like I've preached and or, or I've said and and God's, you know, right and used the body of Christ and, and his word and and good study and listening to his spirit to like convince me otherwise. That's it stinks. Mm-hmm stinks for a couple of reasons. One, because I know, man, there's some responsibility for me teaching that in a poor way mm-hmm. and the weight of leading people astray. James talks about like our, our, the life and the death and the responsibility of teachers, especially. And then it stinks because I have to admit that I was, that I was wrong mm-hmm. and that I had a bad understanding in my imperfection of what this looks like. And I have to become humble, but that's what, you know, Jesus didn't come overthrow and the way that we want to even see politics overthrown, he came in humility. And I think he invites us to that same posture as believers is, is to, to be humble people that are, and it stinks. And we see this model in Paul. Paul had every right to just tell people they were dumb, got his conversion was wild. He had the right uh, status in, in being a Jew. He had the right status in having his Roman citizenship. And if you read Paul's letters as they progress, Paul, like he doesn't, he gets more and more humble. Like he's like, I'm Paul. And then he ends it by like, yeah, I'm just this guy. And then he ends Mm -hmm. his, his letter, his last letter with, I'm the chief of all sinners. Mm -hmm. And so there's this posture that Paul is realizing in the Mm -hmm. sanctification process that, that God is, is humbling him Mm -hmm. and, and, and that he, he needed to be humbled and that God's used these lessons. We don't know what that thorn in his side was, but I think God was breaking down Paul over and over to become more and more humble. And his, his ministry, you know, it's probably one of the most thriving ministries we've ever seen in the world from writing letters and planting churches mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. So I think that's having a proper theology of God's sovereignty is God really in control? Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Is he really going to build his church and nothing's going to stop it? Do yeah. I really, really believe that? Is this distracting me from the Great Commission? Yeah. Am I trying to win people to Jesus or am I trying to win people to an argument or an mm-hmm. ideology? Is this leading to a deeper love of Jesus and a deeper love of pe- for people? Or is this leading me away from Jesus and away from loving people mm-hmm. the way Jesus mm-hmm. taught me to? So mm-hmm. yeah. there's my little preacher tangent. <laughs> love it. For so it. good. Preach it. <laughs> I th- I, yeah, you know, you you see this call for unity too, and a lot a lot of times, and I think it's where we're headed. It is going to be more and more difficult for us to do that if we're not willing to put aside some of this stuff. And sometimes within the church, it's easy to find unity because there's a lot of like-minded people who can get together and and feel unified. But I think it's important to remember that there's a whole world outside of these walls that, that we need to reach and that when we, you know, want to perpetuate things that aren't true, our witness can be so damaged to the world when we are sucked into lies and we are representing ourselves and our faith in a terrible light, then we're not, about our father's work anymore because we're we're not attractive to someone who is an unbeliever. They are seeing the worst side of Christianity through some of this stuff. And so I think as we move in past this, what can be best for us is just to realize we're not always going to agree with people, but I think listening is is so important and so crucial to listen to people's experiences, understand where they're coming from, understand even if it is even I think that's something that's even working within me. Like when I'm hearing people tell me these conspiracy theories that you just I mean, sure, sometimes they're so aloof that you, you have no way of telling them they're wrong because there's no way of proving it. But there's other times where you're just like, OK, this is obviously a, something that's been proven false, but you just have to kind of sit back and in that humility, listen and then try to have a civil conversation with them to bring that unity. But when we when we just disagree with people for the sake of disagreeing to be right, we lose that opportunity really quick, I think. Yeah, I think that's good. I think it's when we when we use Christianity as a as a cultural battering ram and and we stop looking at it as an opportunity to serve people, when we use Christianity as, as our excuse to to create more enemies Mm. and love less then it's not Christianity anymore, but I'm excited for this as heartbreaking as it, as it is, I'm excited for this, this place we're at in the church, Mm -hmm. because I think it's forced a lot of difficult questions to be had around, Mm. around theology, around Mm -hmm. God's sovereignty, around who's really in control that we for a long time just have skated by without having. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's painful, Mm -hmm. but I think it's going to cause much needed growth for the church to continue to, to thrive for the church to continue to prosper in whatever ways. If we're willing to engage on these matters, if we're willing to seek truth Mm. together, then I think we're going to see and experience more of Jesus, more of the Holy Spirit than, than we ever have if we're willing to do the hard work of actually engaging in that. I think, you know, what we're, when we see leaders fall, mm-hmm. and we'll talk about that next week, there, it's heartbreaking. But it also forces us to look at ourselves in the mirror in ways we haven't done in a really long time to say, how did we let this happen? Mm-hmm. How did we let the church get here? And how do we fix it? But sometimes we mm-hmm. you have to realize to get out of the facades, you have to realize how broken something is mm-hmm. uh, before we're willing to go fix it. So, mm-hmm. Any closing thoughts from anyone? Anything you need to air out before we wrap things up? It's been, there's a lot to go. I mean, we, it's the tip of the iceberg. There's so many directions, so many mm-hmm. tentacles we could follow. Um, but I think the last thing that I I would just want to say is like, we're all still, we're all on this journey Mm -hmm. of like figuring this out. And that that's where I'm at of just getting, getting into this, figuring this out. I, I'm glad we had this conversation. I think a lot of things Mm -hmm. that we said today spoke to my heart 
even on a personal level of like, mm. not just conspiracy theories, but how am I having a disagreement? Where What's the posture of my heart when I'm looking at someone that's struggling or that's hurt me? Mm-hmm. And so I think just the principles that we talked about are so applicable across the board and we need to keep having a co- conversations like this, mm-hmm. even if they're uncomfortable. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thanks everyone for you know being vulnerable, sharing stories, and having this conversation, no matter how difficult it might be. Thanks to anyone who's listening. We hope that this was helpful in one way or another. If you have any questions or concerns, you can reach out to us on social media at CCC Omaha, or you can send us an email to podcast at cccomaha.org. We'd love to hear from you. Until then, we'll talk to you later. <laughs>